Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. <clears throat> and for today's bonus content, we're going to be having a look at this dice clone puzzle by Justin Smart. But first, there's a lot going on on the channel at the moment. So earlier today, Simon's released a video on four puzzles prepared, themed on Cracking the Cryptic by Jonas Gleim. They're not Sudoku puzzles. They're excellent puzzles, though, nonetheless, um, and he sent them in specially for us. That's brilliant. Um, also, on Patreon, for our $2 subscribers, $2 a month gets you, a th this month, a three-puzzle-linked series of Sudokus themed on odd pentominoes, and I think they're fantastic. Um, but what's even more fantastic in some ways is that on Patreon as well, not behind the paywall for anybody, is an astonishing nine series puzzle, nine Sudoku puzzle hunt by um, Ben Needham and edited by ourselves. There's, there's more to it than just Sudoku though. Be warned, it's going to take you some hours to get through that, however good you are. Um, it's really impressive and certainly something to anticipate. So <clears throat> that's effectively 16 great puzzles we've already released today. I mean, honestly, it's just brilliant content. Um, even if you don't like puzzles, you can enjoy sometimes watching the videos of Simon solving. Uh, these for a $3 Patreon subscription, there'll be a uh, video later in the month on how to solve the three puzzle series. I don't know if we'll ever do a video on Ben Needham's puzzle hunt, but it is brilliant. Anyway, so what are we doing tonight? This is, I called it a dice clone Sudoku. So the rules are that the grey shape in the cell, in the grid, is a net for a dice. I was always taught that the singular is a die, but I think it's fairly commonplace these days to use a dice and it's a bit clearer what we're talking about. So we're talking about a regular six-sided cubic dice, which has, and it's important this, that the opposite faces always add up to seven. So this is a net for such a dice and the opposite faces must add up to seven and contain one, two, three, three, four, five, six. So it's a regular dice. Now the interesting thing about this one is that somewhere in the grid, hidden, is a clone of this shape. So however the numbers appear, one, two, three, four, five, six, on this shape, there is an exactly identical shape with the exactly identical numbers on somewhere else in the grid. And that's the puzzle Justin Smart has set us and I'm looking forward to it, it looks great. So let's have a go and get cracking. And you can try the puzzle on the link below the video, as always. So, a um, bit of regular Sudoku, I suppose. There's a couple of fours at the top, so we can pencil mark fours into these two cells. Oh God, there's not a lot of stuff being provided here. Um, nines in one of those two, I suppose. Much else going on? There's so few similar digits around. Um, Wow, who would have guessed that this kind of Sudoku could have so little information? So let's have a look at the net. I mean, not much else we can do. So it contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it's kind of an extra region with those numbers. Now this bottom one obviously can't be a 1. I guess that means its opposite face can't be a 6. I think that has to be here. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but I've made a few dice from nets in the past. I'm pretty sure those two always have to be opposite faces, those two always have to be opposite faces, and those two. So I'm confident about that. I'm going to certainly use it. So this one can't be one or five because it's in the same box. Therefore, the opposite face can't be six or two. And that one can't be four either, so we take three out of there. This one up here can't be four, so that removes three from here. And this one can't be five, so we can take two out of there. But all of these are still possible. And I'm not really sure if we've made much advances. I suppose eight we could pencil in over here because none of these, all of these are from one to six. That gives us pencil marked eights up there. Um, no, I don't. 
I don't think we're getting much else from this. Um, I guess what we're going to have to do then is look at the possible possibilities for where is the other clone. Now we haven't been told whether it can overlap with this clone or with any of the given numbers in the grid. So I'm going to have to assume that's possible. But where could it be? So let's concentrate on the crossbar, the three across. What row could they be in? Well, they can't be in the top row because we need one gray cell above them. In this row, we've got a four and a three. So they could involve a two and a six. Ah, look, no, the clone shape can never overlap with the gray shape in the grid because it's got to have a different number. If, if it did, there'd be one number in one space, but it would be a different number in the other because this is all different numbers and this number has to be the bottom of the clone wherever it is so it couldn't be this number because that has to be different so the clone can never overlap that's clear could it involve the four though yes there's a four there so presumably that's one possibility for it no it couldn't because the four would have to be opposite of three ah and we've got four and three too far apart to be together so that can't be the crossbar and that can't be the crossbar. Um, this could be, could it? Here. If four was at the bottom, six, one were there, two, five were there. I think it could be there. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark the crossbar possibilities in blue, say. So that's one place it could be. Now, could the crossbar be on this row? Well, only if it was here or in the next space. Here's not possible because, well, maybe it is. I was gonna say that can't be four and three because this one can't be either. Um, but I guess it could be six and one. What? Is there anything wrong with this shape or is this actually possible? I think that is possible. Let's mark it in as possible. And how about if the clone was here? Yeah, I'm gonna mark that one as possible too. Might have to study these a bit more. So I don't, th oh, well, if it was on this row, it would have to be here. It can't overlap and it can't use the nine. So that's the only possibility. Oh, and it's not a possibility, obviously, because these two would have to be the same as these two cells. No, that, that's nonsense. Can't be here. And I can see that immediately because there'd be far too many cells in the middle box, which were between one and six. You couldn't fit seven, eight, and nine in. And it can't be over here because that involves the nine. Now, could it have the five in it here? No, because it would need the two at the bottom, so it's not over there. Similarly, that can't be the shape, but this row looks like it's got potential. That's got too many cells in the middle box again. Ah, but one here? No, because that would have a one at the bottom of the shape, and this one can't be a one. Can't have the nine in, obviously, and it can't be out here. So that row is not possible at all. Now this row is the last one where we could still keep it in bounds. It can't be there because it would need a five opposite the two. It can't have a seven in, it can't overlap the current clone, it can't have an eight in, and it can't have a six in. So we've got kind of three possible shapes here. Um, they all look sort of possible to me at the moment. <clears throat> so I'm gonna mark all of those cells blue and we've got kind of six possibilities so let's study them in a bit more detail than I was doing there now if this was yeah this doesn't work because all the yellow cells in this top box would be below six where would eight go in the box here except that's impossible because of that eight so we can get rid of that one that's good okay we've eliminated one I guess this is the way you have to approach this puzzle. Now, if it was here, 
Um, we can kind of see where eight, seven, and nine would go in the central. Oh no, it can't be there because those two cells would have to be the same as those two and they're in the same box. Okay, so I'm gonna white that cell. Now, this possibility. Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't see why not. Now, the one down here means the top, these two would have to be six and one. And that is, that's one of the th two, one of the three possibilities from here. So if they were six and one, this would then be five, three or four, two, three or four. It looks like it is possible. Five, ah, uh, no. Okay, if, wow, six, five, one is how it would have to go at the top. I'm saying this one would have to be a five because it can't be six or one and it can't be four or three. And if that and that are two and five, there's obviously a five there, it would have to be five there and two there. And if this was six, five, one, that would make the top cell of the clone three, and that would have to go here in the hidden clone, and that's impossible next to another three. So we've ruled out that shape slightly complicatedly. So let's try this one. Well, no, let, actually, let's try the one with the one in first, because I think that's quite unlikely. Um, that would have a six here. That would be six and one. Oh, no, 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 this isn't possible because we've pencil marked in a nine. So the middle bit is not possible. And in fact, we're left with two shapes, either of which use up one of the cells for the nine. So that can't be a nine. And we can fill in a nine in the grid here. I'm not sure that's particularly helpful at this point, but so we've either got this shape or this one. Now if it was this one, I don't think it can be. Oh no, maybe. No, it can't. Look, three wouldn't be on this row. So three and four would have to be in those two cells. That's possible so far. But where are you going to put one and six in these four? Can't do it because one and six are both in this box. So one of these two would have to be one or six. So that is the last alternative shape. So I'm going to gray in all these shapes. This must be, by elimination, the hidden clone. And that's quite interesting. So let's fill in, let's get rid of eight from there. It's not possible. Let's fill in the possibles we wrote above and start eliminating them. Um, it may not be a very elegant method, but it's certainly gonna to get to the answer. And let's start with this cell. Oh, look, that can't be two, one, or six. That's going to have to be four opposite three. And we can fill them in here as well. Four opposite three. We can get rid of all the four possibilities that we put in before. And the three ones, there we go. Brilliant. Okay. And look, yeah, that one is resolving this one. So that is instant five and two five and two this must now be a one and this is a six okay so we've got the clones placed i didn't think that that was going to be something we did early in this puzzle the rest of it i think it's just classic sudoku now so um let's put in though those can't be nine because of that one um Eight, yeah, eight, nine. Okay, two, eight, one, four, six. Right, this has to be a three because that three is ruled out of all of those. So we've got five at the bottom to go with seven and nine. That's a seven, nine pair. Now this is a two, eight pair. Um, two, eight, three, five, four. This is a one, six pair around the four. And this is seven and nine. We can fill them in. Um, didn't really need the Oh, that's eight and two. So the two we've got in the fourth row already fixes that. Nine, five, seven up the top here. That one's five or nine. 
that's five or seven, and that's five, seven or nine. Okay, so that's the cent central column of boxes done. Now down here, one of these must be one, one of these must be two. Um, that's a naked single. Yep, yeah, that's got to be a seven. Two, eight, four, one, six in its row, five, nine in its box, and a three in its column. So the only other possibility is seven, and that resolves our nine, seven pair. So we've now got a three, five pair around the two. Um, three can be placed in this box. It's got to be here. One of these is a four. Don't know which one yet. That makes one of these a four. One of these two a three. Um, okay, not that helpful. One actually, one there and there, and one there is ruling out all of these cells. So we can put a one in this box, and then one in one of those. And look, that's um, the cells with one in have to be in columns uh, rows one and three. So one of those two has to be a one, and we can see a one there. So we can actually place that one. It's quite neat. That means we can place that one and get rid of the one out of that pencil mark. Eight must be in one of these spots because of that eight. And that means this pair must be a two eight pair down here. And we can put in four here. Excellent. Let's just remove the pencil marks from the corner. That must be a genuine four. We've got an eight nine six triple up here. So, um, Eight or nine there, nine or six, and six, nine, eight there. What else can we see? This is a naked single. That's got to be seven, two, one, five, eight in the row, four, nine, three, six in the column. Glad to spot that. Could have taken a while. One of these is a seven. Um, one of these is a five. Four, three. Does that mean this is a six? Yes, it's another naked single. Helpful to have got the pencil marks in. So once two and eight were looking at that cell, that was clear. One of these is a nine. Um, two actually is limited to those three as well. But eight could be any of those. I mean, that's just sort of complete pencil marks for that box. Six one four three seven nine. Sorry, this would probably be going a bit quicker, but ah, seven. Look, that's ruled out of all those cells by these two sevens, and that's great. Now we can place seven, four in the opposite corner, uh, two looking up into this box. That's resolved as well. So I can put a three pair there and a five pair up here. Two, six, seven. Oh, that doesn't fix either of those. That's surprising. Four is in one of those two. Um, ooh, thought I'd blown it. Away. Oh, right, that five, seven, five pair is fixed. So that gives us that whole triple. Um, five, seven. It's great that this is still quite a tough you know, a proper challenge, even as a classic Sudoku after doing the stuff. So nine has to be there now, after doing the stuff with the clones. Um, eight, two, that's been resolved, okay. So this is an eight, five pair, we can put them in. Okay, so now it's coming. Six, two, one, sorry. Six and one there. Um, this two, four, three set, yes, we can resolve them, that's fine. Five and eight, they're done now as well. Eight and two, so I think we're just finishing off now. But what a nice puzzle. That's a really clever puzzle that Justin set there. Um, really neat how that dice net only had one possible counterpart anywhere in the grid. Um, I'm guessing that's how you have to solve it. I really can't believe that you could approach this any other way, but let us know in the comments if you found something better to do or you thought that was just trivial for some reason i certainly didn't i like that in fact i'm going to call it we haven't just released 16 great puzzles today we've released 17 now so epic times for the channel and uh, epic times for puzzlers there's so much good content out there 
enjoy it all. Do, do take some time if you can to have a go at a lot of the puzzles. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Really hope you'll join us again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.